Regensburg, Germany's medieval wonder, capital of the Bavarian Oberpfalz, and also often described as Italy's most northerly city. Much prized in Europe and designated by UNESCO as a unique cultural and historical monument, and also the hometown of Pope Benedict XVI. The mighty dome of St. Peter marks the center of the old town. The impressive Episcopal church stands on the site of a Roman building. An equestrian statue of King Louis I guards the Gothic building. Indeed, it was he who had this sacred building completed. The building was modeled after various French Gothic cathedrals in around 1250 AD, and several master builders took part in its construction. The facade of the cathedral tells its own story. Statues, gargoyles, reliefs and stained glass windows depict the religious faith of medieval times. After the eyes have become accustomed to the dark interior, the little light permitted by the lead glass windows adds an air of mystery. The external walls contain varied tones. The reason for this was that more than one type of stone was used for their construction. First limestone, then green sandstone, and then limestone again. At the side of the cathedral is the St. Ulrich Church, which was originally the Duke's Chapel. Today, this early Gothic church is the Diocesan Museum and it contains a number of precious sacred objects that date back hundreds of years. Here, the Middle Ages lives on and a prominent tower with adjacent passage makes up the Duke district. Regensburg has a long, proud and colourful history and more than 2,000 years ago the Celts settled here. Later came the Roman legions camp of Castra Regina and in the early 6th century the Agilol Finger settled here. In 739 AD, a monk, Bonifatius, founded a diocese. And from 834 AD, the German East Frankish King Ludwig and Emperor Arnulf of Carinthia resided here. Following the extinction of the Carolingians, Regensburg remained the residence of both emperors and kings as well as wealthy merchants who became increasingly influential. This all augmented the city's image and its inevitable prosperity. In the power struggle between both emperor and church, there was another contender the bourgeoisie, immensely rich merchants, comparable with the Fuggers. In 
In 1245, Emperor Frederick II decreed that the city should govern itself, headed by a mayor. So the free imperial city was born. The ancient town hall is one of the oldest in southern Germany and was built in the 13th century. The city's wealthy citizens featured grand ballrooms on the first floor of their residences. Therefore, the town hall could have nothing less grand, and so the imperial hall was built. The city grew and numerous commercial buildings and residential areas were created. However, the eventual 30-year war did not spare Regensburg. A quarter of a century later, following the Peace of Westphalia, the city's churches were once again transformed. The old chapel was embellished with elaborate Rococo stucco. Regensburg is located at the northernmost point of Europe's second longest river, the Danube. A 984 foot long bridge leads to the gate. In prehistoric times, there was a ford and later a pontoon bridge followed by a wooden bridge. But after various floods and collisions with sheets of floating ice, it had to be rebuilt. Subsequently, a stone bridge was built. In the Middle Ages, the city was both culturally and economically the fastest growing city in southern Germany. But both church and dukes strove for power. A bitter power struggle with no winners. Even when the perpetual diets, a kind of German parliament, was held here after the Peace of Westphalia, the city saw little benefit. There met the rulers of the Holy Roman Empire and many foreign observers. However, they paid no taxes and were allowed to bring in their goods duty-free. Finally, Regensburg fell to the Kingdom of Bavaria in 1810 and became a provincial Bavarian town. Here, the 19th century could be described as having been a sleeping beauty because this city on the Danube lacked industry and therefore the new wealth. <laughs> 